Hey guys, well today I want to talk to you about a product that I purchased at this year's Pathfinder gathering. I've been looking at, uh, I was been looking at getting this stuff anyway, but uh, it just so happened he was there and uh, the vendor was there and I was able to get this product. This is a Dragonfire Tinder Box Extreme Pouch of Tinder. This is all natural tinder. And I tell you, the reason I got this primarily is because I've been dabbling in um, teaching some classes, okay? I've had a couple of Facebook events now, and up my local DNR in Wisconsin uh, has a little office there that I've taught uh, one class, and I'm going to be teaching another one here coming up shortly. And sometimes, you know, when you're on a, in a park or something like that, there may not be enough resources to go around. And besides that, this, I'm hoping, I haven't even opened this yet, but I'm hoping this will have such a wide variety of Tinder that I will be able to open this bag and show folks, bam, this is what you need when you're, look, when you're walking around in the woods, this is the type of stuff that you're looking for in order to create a fire. If you go to any car camping type place, a state park where they have the sites set out specifically for you, and you go around and you watch people light fires. 99% of the time they've got a card in their box or they've got a bunch of newspaper or whatever and that's not lighting their fire. And if it's at all damp out, they struggle. And also in my area, you're not allowed to pick up sticks and stuff like that in those campgrounds. You have to purchase your wood. Most of the time the wood that they sell is crap. So you get a combination, you've got people that don't have maybe 100% you know, great skill level. You've got questionable materials with um, the store-bought wood and they're wadding up the paper and you know, whatever. So this product here can be an extreme learning and teaching tool in my opinion. I'm hoping anyway, like I said, I haven't opened it up yet. I've seen some other reviews and I've talked to the gentleman who owns this company, Daryl. What an amazing person, what an amazing family. Very gracious, very uh, hosting, um, just, just a real, someone you can get behind, someone you can support, something I don't feel like, hey, am I supporting Walmart or something like that? No, this is a small business that, I bought, a, I bought a, quite a bit of products from him just because, I mean, he was just an awesome dude. And I'm, and they had some good products there. I mean, just the idea of their products, listening to him talk about, he's very passionate about Tinder, very passionate. So anyway, let's check this out. Let's open this up and see if, see what's inside of it. Okay, so I went and grabbed a Ziploc bag because I'm not gonna use all this Tinder. I'm gonna pull it apart and see what's in it and just see what's going on, but I wanna use this bag for something after we're all done. First of all, let's just take a look at the bag. It has these little indents where you could rip it open, but that's not necessary because it's just basically ziplocked. It's got a Ziploc closure, so you don't have to compromise your bag when you get into this. You can open it up and reseal it. So anyway, here we go. Okay, so first of all, I can see some tinder in there that I know is gonna be really good. Okay, I just smelled this package. It smells like fat wood like you can't even believe. It's like an air freshener. Right off the bat, I can see he's got some sort of flash tinder in there, along with a nice piece, right off the top, awesome piece of fat wood. I can take, look, look at this. I can take this and make a flipping fire just by itself. So anyway, nice birch bark right off the bat. I can see pine needles. Sorry about that. My cat light reflesh has got ahead of me. What is this here? This is, okay, so this is what I'm gonna guess. This is what I'm gonna guess this is. I think this is probably a pitch ball that is that he's made, he's just put a bunch of flash tinder around it so it wouldn't be sticky. That's gonna, I'm gonna guess that. Let's uh, cut this open. That's exactly what it is. So he's taken a big pitch ball and put a bunch of flash tinder around it, whether that's 
I think it's cattail, but that, I'm not sure. It looks like it anyway. Got a little bit of moss in there. Dried, even though it looks green. This is uh, looks to be a little bit of jute, would be my guess. And a lot of nice fluffy birch bark. Maybe river birch. Okay, what do we got here? Another nice resealable pouch. A book of matches. That's pretty cool. Um, what kind of birch bark is this? This is not my regular white, I think it's called yellow birch, I'm not 100% sure, but a ton of birch bark in here. And like I said, fatwood, flash tinder, pine sap, some type of more fuel, another book of matches it looks like. Pine needles, nice little piece of birch bark, more of that yellow birch. I'm intrigued by this green stuff here. I wonder what that is. It must be just some moss that he, that he has dried out or something. I'm going to put that to the side. Let's test that a little bit more. Pine needles. More cattail fluff, ton of cattail fluff. Little pieces of hardwood. I think the idea behind this, <laughs> nice pitch stick. If you can't light this on fire, man, you got a problem. A nice pitch stick with like some fat wood. You know, it's, geez, talk about redundancy. So basically fat wood with pitch stick. And another little piece of jute here that you could fluff up. I think the theory behind this is that you could light this on fire and then boil some water with it. Look at the shavings on this. Look at how fine of shavings this is. Like if you're telling people how to make feather sticks, obviously this isn't a feather stick, but this is what you're going to want. I mean, I could I could hit that with a ferro rod and I know that would go up. I mean, that's what you want. I mean, that's your basic, obviously your feather sticks would be a lot smaller, but to show people, I and mean, look at that, when people hold this stuff, they're gonna say, wow, it has to be that fine, and you're like, yeah, it's gotta be pretty flipping fine. I think that's a little baby pine cone of some sort. All sorts of little stuff in here. More birch bark. That looks to me like a little piece of punk wood. If I were to guess, I would say it would be a cedar punk wood. But you can show people right off the bat what punk wood is, and then it can take an ember from your ferro rod. Nice little piece of wood there you could add to your fire. Man, this thing just it's like the never ending. Now I think that is hedge or um, Osage Orange, as they call it. That creates a really hot, hot ember. Or hot fire, rather, sorry. A ton of birch bark. Some more fuel. This thing just keeps going and going and going. Look at that. Fat wood. Look at that piece of fat wood. These shavings are fatwood shavings. Totally smell that. What I've got in here is just a ton more fatwood shavings. 
I'm going to try to make a fire with some of this stuff and save the rest. Let's put, geez, look at all this stuff. Let's have this for our base. I'm going to set this in my little fire area. We'll have this little. Invariably, when you show a product like this, a natural tinder product, people are like, oh, I've got that in my front yard. That's no big deal. There's obviously folks that have different resources from where you're at. I buy fatwood. Yep, I buy it. I don't have it great in my area. It's an awesome resource for my wife just to throw some kindling in the fireplace and be able to get it to go. I have people messaging me almost on a daily basis begging me to send them birch bark. I took some birch bark to the gathering, a whole bag full of it. And I mean, it, people don't always have this in your area. If you don't have it in your area, or if people, it's just an amazing learning tool. So I mean, yeah, it's all natural, but not everybody has this stuff. Look at that stuff just burn. All I had to do was just protect it a tiny bit from the wind. Look at that. See, that's why I said I was intrigued. He might have impregnated all this stuff with pine sap. I'm not sure. The bag was just, you could hear it popping and crackling. The bag was just, just reeked of fat wood. So that's pretty cool. All right, guys, let's, uh, I'm going to play around a little bit more. I got a little bunch of it here. I want to try something else with this product. This little bitty ferro rod is uh, a pain to use, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, well, two strikes and I got it to work, so... Man, you can just smell that pine burning, too. fire going here. We'll go on to the next step. Alright guys, one more test here. Let's see if we can boil water in this bag, this nice resealable bag. Now, if you're going to stone boil, I've said this before in my other videos, be real careful of the rocks breaking. Um, you can see these have all shattered. I usually make a fire and let it burn for 20 minutes or so and then come back. So, you know, they're definitely going to shatter on you. This is actually the second time I've done this. The first time my rocks didn't get hard enough because I'll be honest with you, I tipped the bag over and they went in my fire. So this bag is pretty tough. I mean, to have these hot rocks in here for the second time, it's pretty good. I think I'm just gonna let that sit there. Gotta readjust the camera. I'd say that's pretty dang close to a boil right now. close and of course obviously you know someone's gonna say it too you don't need to bring your water to a boil necessarily pasteurizing it at this temperature just leave it in there for a while that'll kill a lot of the nasties I think I put them rocks in there too fast I think I'm starting to compromise the bag Should have had something on the bottom of it. Wow, that's hot. Holy crap. I had her boiling for a second. All the water in the bottom is probably not being contacted by all these rocks that I've put in there. In other words, I think that actually some of the rocks are actually insulating itself insulating it from the water. 
I don't know, the water, I mean, it's not leaking. I don't see no water coming out. I sure hear it though, sizzling in there. Well, I ran out of rocks. I'm gonna say that that son of a gun. <laughs> you goofball. I'm gonna say that boiled, so. That's a tough bag right there. That's basically the point that I was trying to get across. Is that's a tough bag. I mean, look at that. Man, that's hot. No compromises in that bag at all. All right, guys. Well, obviously they didn't design this bag for some pyromaniac to come and stone boil in it, but it worked. Um, I'm gonna call that a success for sure. I mean, it's just because I was stupid and was messing around with it and it spilled doesn't mean it wasn't a success. And the bag is not compromised at all. It's pretty good. Holds air, looks like to me. So I'd say it's not compromised. So anyway, this is all the good stuff that came in it. Worked real good for a teaching tool or even just carrying it. Um, you know, I'd throw a bag of that in there, especially like if you're out with your wife or your daughter or somebody who's not real experienced or even in a wet condition. I mean, dry tinder is a precious commodity when it's raining, that's for sure. So the Dragonfire Tinder Box, I'm gonna put a link to the guy's site. They even, I even bought a little bit of char cloth, okay? real good handy to see what it's supposed to be like and the properties and stuff like that or you know just to use it yourself another product they have here i already forgot what this one was called fireball i think maybe i haven't even opened this one ton of good shavings in there looks like it's basically a pine pitched stuffed inside of a roll of birch bark i mean if you can't get that to go on fire you you got issues so all right guys pretty cool stuff check it out on uh, dragonfire tinderbox and uh, put the link down in the in the description I think it's pretty cool stuff all right guys take care